welcome to my youtube channel tomorrow i'm writing an exam i know not exciting but your girl is girl of writing exams so if i'm gonna share my life with you then there's that boring part as well so as you guys might know i'm studying like towards becoming a fellow um a fellow actuary um uh as part of like the actuarial society of south africa um and essentially to become a fellow um you need to uh have these two major requirement or two streams um of uh requirements that you need to do the first one give the exams and that's where it goes down right? they also now introduced another element which is uh around competency and providing evidence so you literally need to like prove that you can do certain things at work right before you actually become a fellow even though you passed exams so that's where i'm at now i'm completing those um requirements uh so that i can get admitted as a fellow a fellow actuary tomorrow's competency uh is around modeling so i'm writing an exam which is testing my ability to model things so guys yeah jimmy yeah no I think I covered most of what I needed to cover. Yeah. Happy gym sesh. Welcome back, guys. Um, so today is Saturday. I wrote the exam yesterday. And afterwards, I was so beat, guys. Did I mention that the exam is, like, from 8 to 5, basically? So, like, with a 30-minute break in between. So, I've never felt so tired in my life, guys. Like, like I couldn't do anything But how did the exam go? I mean It's in the past now I'm not trying to think about it a lot It will invoke emotions that I really can't satisfy I can't go back and change Any of my answers um, But yeah, no It was definitely a curveball I was asked a model that like I hadn't seen before So inside it, like In the exam itself um, I had to like get to know the model and the thing about knowing a, a model in advance is you know how it would work in Excel So even though I knew the The theory and the approach the execution on Excel took me quite a while and I wasted a lot of time there um, The problem was like my model wasn't producing um, sensical results and You know like I was gonna lose marks on the conclusions um, on the results, conclusions, and sections, which is like about 20 marks. So I had to go through, go back to the model after documenting everything and seeing that the results are off and literally use brute force. So brute force is when you like make manual interventions in Excel to achieve your goal. So usually like I'm a, I, I try to be efficient and try to be formula driven, but I realized that this is an exam situation and you know i'm gonna have to result uh resort to this and it finally was it came out and it was giving results that i can actually talk about and then from there it was basically sprinting to the finish and i don't even know whether i made it on time so we'll find out from the results but for now i move on it's been a terrible two weeks or month of thinking about this exam and everything it's just been weighing on my conscience um so now it's my first day out of freedom i'm going out with a friend of mine a very close friend so this is the fit today i'm going for this is the i think this is the last week of summer guys it's the last week of summer so i brought one of the summer dresses out you know for to play so probably the last weekend i get to do this Can I show you? Say hi, Chom. Guys, it's popping at Tiger's Mother. Hey, guys. 
Today we're going to be doing something very exciting just to take away from all the doom and gloom of the exam. Right now I'm very refreshed, like I'm still recovering and, you know, getting into the swing of things. One of the first things that I'm doing, which I'm so excited about, is I've been invited by the Association of South African Black Actuaries a student chapter at UP to come speak to the students. Basically, what Asaba is about, um, that's the short word, it's addressing the, you know, the dust of uh, previously disadvantaged communities, um, their representation in the actuarial field and other quantitative fields. So they want to address the fact that we are not represented, guys, when it comes to these industries where the skills are like highly specialized and, you know, and in demand. Like, I don't even want to mention the kind of situation we're dealing with, but the stats are available on the website, um, on the on the website of the profession um, in terms of what the demography looks like. So, yeah, so they invited me and I'm going to go speak to them and, you know, motivate them. Like, because now I'm an underdog, like, you know, I, it, I didn't take the high road. It was a struggle. So... I just want to inspire other people who have like journeys like mine that you know to just keep at it and yeah etc so uh let me show you the fit yeah guys so here's here's today's fit um yeah i'm gonna pick up my friend one delay um one delay has offered to take snaps of me when I'm giving my speech and the whole journey. <sighs> what a real one, hey? What a real one. So yeah, guys, I'm super late now, so let me get going. Because I've been a high flyer for my whole life. 
So I'm just not sure how I'm, I'm processing everything out. But really, third year was where it went down. Like, I, where I saw literal flames. And I experienced, like, adult challenges. You know, I had been a child up until then. So then, um, I really went through a rough patch here, like, mental health-wise. Um, I, was, I was not sure whether I wanted to share this, but I also became depressed, right? Um, and what that meant is I actually couldn't function um, in the university. Whatever test I wrote, whatever I studied, um, I wasn't in the correct mental state to be able to approach it. So I seek some advice. That's why I didn't make it, uh, graduate in record time. And you know, um, I got up and I was able to rise again, right? And I was given a second chance. So then fourth year came. And really, I'd say the first lesson was humility, like I explained. But when it came to fourth year in university, it was about discipline and sacrifice. So in university, I was a bit of a comrade, you know, um, feet must fall and everything. So then I had to resign from the movement. But I had to choose myself. I had to ask myself, in order for me to make a difference in the world, how about I empower myself for a time? You know, so then that's when I withdrew from everything. You know, it, the journey became very lonely for me. Um, but I realized that what kept driving me was this thirst to get the degree, right? So I was willing to do anything and everything, even sacrificing things that were important to me. Um, while later on, it came back to bite me, um, but I'll share that also. So come fourth year, um, I graduated with only three exemptions. I'm happy because getting 50s became a challenge. Like we were literally failing. I was, every course I would fail the whole semester and then pass the exam. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it was really like, it was really rough. So I graduated with three exemptions, but I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Confidence is low. I'm like 10 exams, you know, like what am I gonna do? So I had to have a lot of faith. So that's when the faith came in trusting the process, you know, going to a lot of events, trying to remain inspired. Um, I also learned a lot of support. So I know, I think being humble in university actually set me up well later in life because it was clear to me that I needed help. And that those were the CTs, so those were the core technical subjects. Really there it was about practice mostly, right? Being, uh, and that's where I also had to start learning about what the examiner wants and how to earn marks in an exam. Um, so two years went by, passed them, even changed the job. So at that time I realized that, okay, I started in product, product development, but I wanted like to experience traditional actual work. So I went into a valuation role, which essentially means that it's a role where you value liabilities according to regulatory, according to regulation. Yeah. And this particular one was FS 17. So I had my second rub up with mental health issues, right? Um, I was burnt out. I did, uh, it was two years of writing back to back two exams and I had actually failed one of them. Luckily we managed to pass the other one the first time. Um, yeah, I generally got through it because of perseverance. The first time I tried to hear one failed, failed it dismally. So then I had to like really look back and take a break, which is hard because your exam passes dictate your salary a lot when you start out. So saying that I'm gonna delay this was tough, but I knew that I had to like come back mentally strong and I had to rework really on myself, which is very important. Like you are not gonna pass the exam if you're not okay psychologically, mentally and physically. Um, I became very militant in my approach. So I was actually talking to a friend yesterday and I thought this is only me, but, and this is not healthy. Um, I, I saw the exam as a battle, like it was literally a physical like war. Mm -hmm. And even when I wake up in the morning, I pump myself up and say, I'm going into this exam, I'm gonna get it no matter what. So even when challenges come in the exam, like I always like, you know, fight and be like, I'm not going down. This patient is telling all of us. And I just have to show the examiner that, you know, at least I'm thinking in the right direction. So now I passed seeing one the next time around. And I think it was because of the break. I think the break really made me like 
so strong and just the sacrifices that I've made were just paying off at the time. And now I was like, oh, I've done like, I've crossed the major milestone. You know, maybe I can do this thing. I reached a very important milestone, um, which is where I now needed to choose what I wanted to specialize in. You know, the specialist technical courses are the two that you have to choose. Like they, they take like what fellowship course you can do. So that's like a good, important milestone where you can take a step back and ask yourself where you want your career to go. Because when you get to the fellowship, uh, the specialist application, which is the last fellowship exam, um, you they ask about what happens in practice, and they don't care when they mean that. They literally want you to answer like a competent actuary in the specific practice area, right? So I chose enterprise risk management because I, I wanted to be a business person, and so it's basically about how you would the best practice around. Uh, approaching uh, risk management from a holistic level for a firm. Then I also chose life insurance. I had to be realistic and understand the depth at which the examiners really wanted you to express yourself on paper, right? So I was like, let me do something when I work in, I was working in a life insurer, right? and I could pretty much get anyone I want on the global list who I could talk to who was in another department where the material focused on. So that was my journey. Um, in terms of study advice, um, you need to know why you're doing exam. And also you need to ask yourself to understand the kind of person that you are when you approach your studying, right? So now you have the motivation, you have the why. Now you need to understand who you are. I understood very early on that I can't cross mine. So I knew that I have to lay out my study time that way. You lay it out just that you source the details that you put exactly what you're going to study on a daily basis up until the exam time. You split it even according to periods in the day. Um, and you actively monitor your study timetable. And you add out with it, you give yourself enough buffer to be able to say, oh my gosh, I thought I could do two chapters in one week, but actually I can only do one. You need to be agile enough to actually know that way before in time then when it's too late. Fitness was also very cheap to me. Um, I couldn't not write, I couldn't write an exam and not go to gym because I was constantly under a lot of stress, right? And you know, my body had all these stress hormones in it that needed some of the endorphins to like, kind of counteract that, right? So it, that's when I learned it's essential for me. You also need to have a balanced life because I've been speaking a lot about sacrificing and sacrifices. Now, like what I'm finding is I'm sort of like underdeveloped in er other areas where like I didn't manage, balance, uh, manage to balance my life. Um, for instance, I'm just on my YouTube channel last week and I really have to. <laughs> <laughs> Where we would motivate each other. Uh, what's the name of the YouTube channel? Our works is out of the board. <laughs> so the community is so important. Like people that you're gonna struggle with, motivate you, um, ask for advice, but take it with a pinch of salt. Like people used to tell me the craziest things that like this other person was like, and then six, six weeks before the exam, he's done studying. And he's like practicing his standard handshake. And I was like, no, man, like, this is, I can't do that, but I bought inspiration from it. So, like, people were doing like whatever they could to make sure they get it. And I think that's when I realized that people who get this thing, like, really, really want it. Like, you're not going to get it if you're passionate about something else. You know, like, I had to choose, I had to make a choice and be genuinely interested in you know just con like considerations that you make and all of those factors you consider i had to be genuinely interested in it so luckily i was able to train my brain to do that um yeah and then you know you should also think about the employer like when you apply for your job just ask them like what study support they offer because that's also quite key 
And then there's this other thing called um, work-based learning, normative skills that I said I'm still doing. Please don't wait until the end to do it and be like me where I passed my last exam last year, June, and then I'm gonna get my fellowship title only next year, Jan, you know, because I'm still completing those requirements. So no matter how hard it is, I used to tell myself that it was difficult to do them both at the same time, but I think I could have tried a little bit harder had I known what the impact, what the car, what the implications of it. Thank you. Um, <laughs>